Okay, good morning friends. Today I'm going to create a whole new bed, but I've allowed this section right here to kind of grow up and set up in a way that I have to start from fresh. The uh, reason why I'm doing that is because there are a lot of um, new gardeners and I think this might uh, appeal to some of you who have got a garden or a space and you don't know where to start. And perhaps yours looks a little bit like this and we will get it to look like this. So some of the things I'm going to be doing is this smoke bush, I'm going to add to this space. That grass right there, I'm going to move and break up into little pieces and I'll swing it around and I will be adding it into this space here in different spots. I won't use it all, but uh, I am going to break it down. And this Japanese blood good is going to get placed in here and this arborvitae is going to replace this space right here so that I can have some privacy from the neighbors because this is the only bare spot in our garden. So that being said, let's get started and we will start from fresh and hopefully you can get a kind of an idea on how to create a new bed. Okay, you can see now that I have a flat surface all the way through here. Now, what do I do? I will go back. I will figure out where I'm going to plant my trees and shrubs. Then I will dig the hole and then we'll get ready to clean this up. It's a very quick process. So as you can see, I'm, I'm saving this up a couple inches above the ground because I will come back and add soil, cardboard to suppress the weeds, and that way I'm not burying the crown of this. So I'll come back here in a little bit, and um, actually I'll pull this out and rough up the, rough this up a little bit, kind of get these roots going in all kinds of directions instead of just growing in a circle. go I'll step back and make sure the tree is exactly how I want it make sure the branches are growing in the direction that I want it and I'm probably gonna leave it in a lean I do that with my trees I'll leave it at a lean uh, towards the path that I want it to to help guide it a little bit not too much but I will leave it at that lean so we'll continue the process So I'm gonna call an audible. I'm gonna move that hosta that's behind there into that space, give it some more color. I don't think I'm gonna end up moving the burning bush or the uh, smoke bush. I actually, it glows right there. So um, as this co project continues, I'll see what uh, I'll see what I come with. With sometimes shoot from the hip doesn't always work, but uh, here we are. <laughs> I have never moved a hosta in June, so wish me luck. 
Okay, what I have now is just a big chunk of cardboard. I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna cut it to fit up against the house. This is going to lay over all the, all the uh, weeds that I had back here, uh, just to kind of suppress them. They've been there for a while, so I mowed them down to the base. Uh, we needed got them down as far as I could. Now I'm gonna put this on here. I'll cut around the trees and, and uh, hosta some grass, and then I'll add a layer of um, soil on top. That way if I get ready to plant other things, it'll be ready and I can lay my mulch on top and call it good. Pardon me. So I ran back to the backyard because I just recalled that when I turned out, tore down that uh, pergola um, in late winter, that the stuff that was around it was now getting full evening sun. And so that project that I'm gonna be doing back there hasn't uh, yet come to fruition. So I went and dug up a couple of hookahs and I also have a rhododendron back there that's not happy. It's getting a lot of evening sun, so just utilizing things throughout the garden and now I won't have to spend the money to uh, bring some more life to this backyard. But I'll get some water on these and they'll, they'll have a new happy home. Now I want to go through here and define the border. Okay, so I threw a little monkey wrench in the plans. Well, I'm doing the side garden, as you've seen, and then my wife comes in and tells me that something happened in our shower and the shower was leaking. I know it's a lot of information, so here we are about a week later. I had to spend all my energy and effort in that uh, replacing that shower. So today I decided that I'm going to switch things up and I am at suburban lawn and landscape one of my favorite landscapes and uh, nurseries pardon me and so i jumped on the golf cart came over here and so where i was parked the grass i'm going to switch that up and i'm going to add some um, hydrangeas and now i'm at the the nursery and i'm going to find me a few hydrangeas that are going to replace that spot with the grass and so if i pan you around here you can see all the little uh, places that um, hold all these different plants shrubs trees and uh but today i'm gonna get lost in the hydrangeas and that's those are hydrangeas all the way across here in the front um a lot of bobos and some of those ones that uh you see in the garden now i have a lot of different hydrangeas in the yard so i'm gonna try to find me something different and if not um i might just have to buy something i already have but uh, hopefully I walk out of here with something that I really want. Let's go take a look. So as I walk through here, a lot of times I'm just shooting from the hip. I've said this a billion times. If you're watching this channel from the very beginning, you know that if you're new to the channel, this is what I do. I just, I decide to work in a certain area in the garden. 
I go down, I pick something up, I'll shop through the garden. In fact, if I can show you some pictures where my grown kids will see me actually, and take pictures of me actually holding a plant or two as I walk through the garden trying to figure out where I'm going to park it. That happens all too often at our uh, in our landscape. So I am going to pick up a few things to put on that uh, west side of the yard, but there's a chance I will be I'll fall in love with something and I'll end up picking it up, whether in this tent or in another one, and um, or up at the front nursery, uh, the front of the nursery, and then I'll end up taking it home and carrying it around until a spot speaks to me. And that's how a lot of times this garden goes. I don't really work off of a budget. I save a lot of my money during the winter months because I'm not doing anything. And so a lot of my, my um, money, uh, budget for this uh for this landscape normally is just because i just set aside uh money during the during the cold months that i'm not doing anything and and then whenever uh spring pops i kind of have an idea and then how much i want to spend uh for each cubby hole in the garden or each um each time i walk out in the garden and a new spot's calling for me to pay attention to it so I'll just go through here and I'll start finding heights. Again, a lot of this stuff I don't know very much about, so I'll just look at heights and see what I'm looking for and see if that uh, that height will go well beside the, ja beside the Japanese maple and um, there's a viburnum there, so I want, I want, I'll have my two heights there, so I'm gonna look for something lower, probably in the three to four foot range maybe. And then on the opposite side, closer to the gas gauge, I will probably try to um, keep it a little bit lower, just enough to hide it, but not enough to uh, disturb it too much because the city still has to get out and walk over there to look at it So, because um, it is obscured from the street. So yeah, that's what I'll be doing in this little space here and figure out what I can find to take home. Okay, I think I'm going to go with these berry white hydrangeas to get super tall, and I'll show you how I'm going to um, incorporate it to the west side of the house. But I think... I think it'll turn out really good and then like i said i like to buy mature plants so in doing so the garden comes together a lot quicker um, i am taking a chance because my next choice are is a new variety i haven't heard of before so i haven't had a chance to um kind of look into it and see how they um, how they do in our area but this is a hydrangea flare but i really like the the shorter height because um, it'll kind of tuck in between the uh, Japanese maple and the uh, vine burdum right in front of the room so or that window back there so um, and I like to go with different heights and stuff so I've already got a couple picked out let's see what we can head back to the house and get them planted well and to stay true to form I got sidetracked into the azaleas and so I'm gonna pick up a couple of these remember those um, round planters that I have behind the pond. Um, I have two gaps there. Um, I'm gonna add those, incorporate those. Probably not in this video, but I'm gonna incorporate those into the garden, but you can see how quickly um, coming in here, uh, getting distracted um, can really affect me. So um, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna pull a couple of these azaleas out, pick out some nice ones, and then um, incorporate those in another video. So good times. Okay, so by pure chance, those two azaleas I picked up, I was gonna park those on the back side of the garden, uh, the pond in the backyard, but um, the further I looked at this, I was like, you know what, they were meant to be here. So I grabbed my wife's shears and uh, I'm gonna limb this tree up here, this Japanese maple. And I think those two azaleas are gonna go here. So yeah, it's it's weird how it works. Sometimes you just uh, luck into those types of things and, um, you know, I don't know, by chance, but here we are. So I'm gonna park them here. I'm kind of guilty of getting too aggressive sometimes. Uh, I don't know, trimming and limbing up stuff, limbing up trees just is so satisfying.
Oh, and by the way, I pulled out the uh, grass that I had in here. That grass wasn't going to work. It just wasn't playing well with my my thoughts. So rough up the roots a little bit. Find the best looking side to the shrub. Find the best looking part to this hydrangea and fill it in. I want to find my best locations for these bazillias so I can dig the hole. I think that's it. I want to still keep it back, but also I want it to kind of spill over the ledge and still be able to edge this um, this border here. So I think all these colors will play nicely together, but uh, so weird how I thought these were going to the backyard. Okay, let's get them in the ground. The cardboard has already started to break down. It's real nice and moist, real pliable, so I just had to cut it back because this was not in the plans. Again, I'll find the best side to come out. I think that's it. I think that's our winner. I will keep this uh, top two inches because I have clay soil. I am amending it with, with the soil that I've brought in. A lot of bark and different materials, but Right now I'm going to leave it two inches higher so that I can backfill with uh, mulch and whatnot. And uh, that way I don't bury the crown of the plant. So good stuff. I'll break up this uh, clay soil a bit. And then I'll slide some of the other stuff in to kind of close up any pockets that I have. That's, a, that's the biggest thing. My biggest concern is making sure there's not too many air pockets in there because this clay soil just kind of clumpy and um, so I want to kind of break it all down and amend it pretty good now all plants like to have some kind of air but uh, in the roots but not big clumps so that will be detrimental to my cause here of getting these planted in and sharing this with you kind of get in here and I don't stomp on it I don't I just kind of put a little pressure on it to push the soil down around the roots and um, just kind of backfill with a little bit of pressure I know there's a lot of times people think you have to stomp on this and step on it and if you're new to gardening don't do that you're you're compacting it the soil so much let these roots establish and run free versus getting all stumped in there and the, the water the moisture when you're trying to water it sometimes will deflect because it wants its easiest path right gravity's pushing it down so it's going to take its easiest path so if you're stomping on that you're compacting that soil so much so that there's a good chance uh, it's just going to run away from the root ball okay let's go plant a hydrangea Another tip if you're new to gardening, rough up the roots. A lot of times when these get in to the, uh, when they plant these in here, the roots just start growing in circles and not really branching out because obviously um, it's got only one space to go. So especially if you see roots coming out of the sides here, you know it's ready to explode um, and, and get on with its natural course. So of reaching out and looking for moisture and minerals so make sure and get in here and kind of scrape it up and and get it uh, get it ready to take off and its new home looks like I might have got too much soil down there now I want to find its best spot it actually looks really good if you're wondering about the gas meter they don't come and look at gas meters here in our our community anymore they have it on a 
digital system. So if that comes up and you're wanting to plant something in front of yours, uh, do your research, call your uh, city, find out what they're, if they need to be able to see it. Some people, there used to be a time when they would just look out of binoculars from the street. Well, this uh, retaining wall beside me hasn't allowed that to happen since I've been here because that retaining wall was here whenever I got here. So either somebody had to come and step around here to find it or they just took a guess. There. One thing I've been wanting to do was get this piece of driftwood my oldest son and I had dug out of the lake and kind of get it more centered towards the front. It's a wonderful piece of wood, but it, as um, this project continued to grow and everything kind of grew around it, it kind of got hidden. So now it tells a little bit better story. And I really, really like. Let me see. Can you see that? Let me zoom you in here. Look at this. All this right here where nature just kind of came in here and carved it and, and um, added the piece of art to, to this. And all I did was find it and repurpose it. Well, I think it looks wonderful because if not, it would just be floating in the lake or, and yeah, it's, I kind of took from its natural habitat, but um, such is life. I mean, it's, it's given a new, a new way of uh, living here in our garden. Um, and then if you see the wire, you can see that wire right, oh, sorry about that, that wire right there. We're getting new cable, so uh, internet, so that's what that's for, if anybody's asking. Because you guys have a keen eye, you guys can spot stuff. I think it's awesome, but that turned out great. You can see my pile of debris back there. I'll end up getting that uh, cleaned up, and then there's that azalea that I put in there. So. Let me get cleaned up and we'll kind of tour this. Okay, I just love the way everything turned out, but I really wanted to start up here and just kind of show you how the front of the garden is really starting to come together. We worked on this project for a few days and brought that to you, but uh, all these projects will continue to uh, affect the next project and blend in. I think it turned out wonderful. Um, super excited to share with you guys this project. I wish I could have brought to you the way I wanted to, right? I want to let new gardeners know that a lot of these projects can be done um, without the knowledge. That's what this channel is about. Um, however you view it, I am not a professional in that type of stuff. I've said that a ton of times. Somebody's probably going to tell me to stop saying that, but I do apologize. Um, I just kind of started this whole idea that I can garden and I've took on to it and one thing led to another then I started to share with you folks anyway I just don't want to um, when I put these projects together they're really actually not too bad and, and they're pretty simple so um, of course it does take a little bit of effort it does take some money um, and a little bit of knowledge you've got to research so if you're new to gardening and you want to start you're not sure where to go to start from just start figuring out what makes makes you happy when you're looking at plants so just start adding them to your garden um, or if you're just creating a garden that's what this bed was for and showing you how you can create a, a garden pretty darn simple and, and pretty easy like just grab you some cardboard some soil and start amending it to your um, natural landscape now one thing I want to share with you before I go any further and get distracted and forget make sure that uh, as you're adding soil towards the house that uh, whether you're in a location that has termites or not, 
make sure you do not allow the soil to uh, contact the wood structure of your house otherwise you will end up probably having some few visitors in your home and mess with the structure of your home so make sure that uh, you do not allow under any circumstances because once that water and soil get uh, to playing together you will end up with critters in your home so don't do that um, but one of the things I'm super excited about if I can share with you is this piece of driftwood so so sharp so remarkable pulled this out of the lake and I know somebody's probably gonna tell me don't mess with natural habitat and I do apologize but uh, wow this piece needed to come home with me so when my son and I dug it up and then adding it to this space right and so then have a backdrop of some gay feather and some of those daisies and whatnot but this really lights it up now if you look further back it doesn't look as good that's because all the material that I pulled out of here all the weeds that type of trash that I just stuck it back there and it'll incorporate it back into the garden I don't always get rid of everything but that's what a lot of this debris is back here it'll just incorporate into the garden this is the rhododendron that I had moved from the back space by the what was it the gazebo early on so the gazebo used to be there then I got rid of it um, I just stuck some lumber there for, to uh, sit there for another day until I will use it so that's all that is there's no purpose to that and then you can see right here growing up I've got a trumpet vine that will certainly add another piece to uh, this garden especially on this back wall here um, and then of course then the garden leads into the back uh, all these trees and landscape such a great addition this used to be blank if you can imagine um, right here on the left you can see where I parked the giant arborvitae I actually wanted to put it right here but I already have an uh, arborvitae on the other side and so went back and forth and I want then I decided I wanted to put the smoke bush in that space and then I got to messing around with it and I really didn't want to disturb the root base and it's we're in the what going into what July 14th or something so our June 14th it's getting too late in the season so I didn't want to I don't want to have to nurse that back from health it's super healthy right there it looks nice so um, that's how I ended up with that rhododendron back there and then as that continues to grow it's going to take some time but it'll fill in the space and I can add a couple more annuals or perennials or maybe another shrub or two to that space I have to be cautious and those of you who have not did not see this project in the beginning so I created this space so the water can run out so this water runs back here takes the gravity uh, gravity takes that water and takes it uh, back here to the back fence and then it guides it around so um, that is one thing that uh, I won't be doing is um, pulling up this space right here because that's what it's working on it's kind of dirty right now because I've been tracking back and forth but how wonderful is this space so if you're asking yourself uh, what will I do with all of the dead space under here uh, a couple things one I will be adding some hookra I really like hookra they will do well in my garden so I'll be adding different things but also the this as this um, different the azaleas and the uh, hookra that's down there the hyd hyd hydrangeas azaleas those type of things once all this stuff starts to mature in the next year or so that'll fill in a lot of those blank spaces and then I'll come back and add but that space will eventually look like this space and this space is just a little over two years old so you can imagine if you use your imagination you can really do a lot um, and right now is a good time to go and start hitting those box stores because they're going to start putting those uh, different plants shrubs trees on clearance and start moving forward with uh, the things that carry them throughout the season um, and it, not much of it is going to be gardening right you can get your soils and barks and those types of things from them the, some of the hardscape but a lot of times uh, they're not built like nurseries so uh, the man hours and all the the time effort that they're going to put into these plants has kind of gone away they just kind of start after mother's day they start transitioning so uh, long story about that is just get down there and, and start finding you some stuff um, to incorporate into your garden and that will uh, you can create a happy space like I'm doing here right up here on top of this um, retaining wall is a black lace elderberry 
that will get you know 10 15 feet tall and it's going to hang off to the side here um, and it's going to look just absolutely amazing because it's a black type leaf it kind of reminds me of a uh, Japanese maple and so as this continues to grow up it's going to cover this whole corner up here and it's going to flirt down here on the side and really pop with the with the uh, retaining wall and why is that important because um, why am I sharing with you sharing that with you is because this hydrangea right here is what's going to get um, what seven feet tall so those two together will work to fill in the space and if you're not sure quite what that's going to look like let me share with you this space here once again see how the hookers and hostas and um, lilies where well, we got some salvia in here some black-eyed susan some cone flowers that's what that space is going to do it's just go everything's going to lean on the other and look for a bright spot to you know catch its natural resources besides water it's going to want the the sun to shine on it so if you're new to garden it's okay to you know get stuff in close to one another because it's all going to work itself out uh, forest work themselves out right so uh, why can't we make it work out in our gardens? You don't want to plant it too close. Do your due diligence and research the spacing and stuff. Um, but yeah, those will all blend in together and will soften up that uh, hardscape of the retaining wall and look really sharp. Um, one of the things I do want to share with you is when I went away to fix the shower uh, mishap, um, I w wasn't uh, giving this space its... Um, this a few things in here so i brought these uh hookra in here and then i brought the hosta right well these guys were in super amount of shade where they only got probably 30 minutes of shade now they get about two hours of sun beating down on them so those those um leaves kind of curled up and they'll be fine it'll bounce back out but what i wanted to share with you in the beginning was uh you know last week when I started this project is I wanted to share that with you, make sure that you understood, hey, you need to uh, know that if you're moving something from a super shaded area to uh, a sunny area location, you're going to have that. Well, now I'm able to share that with you on the backside. So anyways, I think this space turned out well. These azaleas will, all this stuff will continue to move towards the grass as far as like the, uh, the canopy of these um, structures, uh, these plants. So I think it'll turn out so nice. On the back side here, you can see I have a viburnum. I'll put the particular one it is. And then the purple pride beautyberry, I believe it is. So all these um, different things will continue to work. Uh, these different shrubs and trees and plants and annuals will continue to um, work with one another to, to give us a beautiful space back here. Now this garden is not, space is not done. Um, when Moxie Gardens pops up on your phone or your computer or your TV, however it is that uh, you get this information when you're watching um, YouTube videos, I can tell you that it's, I want uh, I want you to kind of have like, oh, guy, what's this guy up to now? And so there is going to be more going in here. I'm going to be adding um, some hardscape in here, perhaps um, an arch, some way of an entryway I think it'll look really sharp stay tuned for that uh, may not happen right away but I've got I've got a lot of things cooking so um, you can imagine that uh, this space will look as beautiful as the space in the back so um, so as I stand here I can tell you I'm really excited about the way it turned out I know the grass probably looks a little little uh, crunched up I did spend a lot of time and effort back here and with the rain and the sprinklers uh, that grass is laying down so um, normally it stands tall and looks good but uh, outside of that I think it turned out really well and I can't wait for this space to uh, continue to grow and just like this garden it just everything just continues to mature so that being said just remember keep the soil away from your house from the wood of your house or any other structures um, that you don't want rotted out or you don't want uh, to bring in little critters and then secondly um, just shoot your shot. You got to start somewhere. If you're new to gardening, do your best. Add some amend amendment to your soil. If you've got clay soil or you've got soil that doesn't uh, cooperate, just uh, and then when it comes to plants, if you're brand new and you really want to get out there and start giving it your all, um, find out what makes you happy. Go down to a park. Go down to a nursery. Go down to an arboretum, a botanical garden, whatever it is that catches your fancy, and see what you can. Um, 
what inspires you see what what plants that uh, catch your fancy and and um, see what you can bring to the garden and start off small and you never know where it might lead you that being said i appreciate you guys for watching this uh, video we'll talk to you guys soon Bye bye